Hey everybody, Dr. Dave here. COVID-19 has turned this world upside down, but wait a minute, don't more people get the flu? Don't more people die of the flu? This is a question I get asked a lot and I'll give you my thoughts on that right now. It is true, if you look at the raw numbers between COVID-19 and influenza, the numbers look a lot bigger on the influenza side, but there are seven key differences between influenza and COVID at this point that I wanna share with you. Let's get right into it. Number one, we can test easily for the flu, but not for COVID-19. A point of care test is one that can be done rapidly at the bedside and give me an answer in three to five minutes. Now we've all had the flu test done before, and granted, they're not perfect, and I take this into account when I'm seeing my patients, but still, when I'm faced with a virus that can be spread really easily, it's a very powerful tool to get an answer in just a short period of time. I don't have that against COVID. Now, things have gotten much better. When all of this started, I couldn't even order a COVID test if I wanted to. Now I can, but there is a big delay. There are a few over-the-counter tests and quick tests that can be done, but those aren't the best ones. A PCR test tends to be the best one. Right now, I have to schedule a patient to get this test, which can take one to three days, and then the results can get to me anywhere between two days to seven days. That's an incredibly long period of time when we're talking about management decisions like isolation, whether or not to work, what to do with family members, things like that. Number two, influenza is recognizable, but COVID-19 is not. Now it's true that everybody's going to react differently to any kind of infection, but for the most part, people with influenza are going to have some combination of symptoms. These are fever, cough, muscle aches, sinus symptoms, stomach ache, things like that. We can usually recognize the flu when it comes in the door. Unfortunately, COVID-19 is all over the place. In terms of symptoms, you can have cough, fever, runny nose, loss of taste or smell, headache, shortness of breath, or no symptoms at all. Now, if you look at these two lists, there is a fair amount of overlap, but the fact of the matter is, influenza really doesn't tend to sneak up on us. It is fairly recognizable, but COVID-19 is not. The ability to quickly recognize a disease and diagnose it correctly is a very powerful tool. We don't have that yet for COVID-19. Number three, influenza has predictable disease severity, but COVID-19 does not. We have enough experience with influenza where we can tell pretty much who the people are who are going to get very sick and who are just gonna feel crummy for a few days. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case with COVID-19. Let's look at the following example. So here we have two gentlemen, uh, very similar. Let's say they're both in their early 40s, both male. Neither one of them have any medical issues. Neither one of them take medications. And unfortunately, both of them come down with COVID-19. Now the guy on the left starts out with some fever, some cough, and some shortness of breath, and his symptoms get worse to the point where he needs to go into the hospital. He eventually develops a severe lung inflammatory condition called acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, and that requires him to be put on a mechanical ventilator under a certain protocol. He has a long hospital stay, complicated by blood clots in his legs and his lungs, and he eventually even develops a stroke, which is going to affect him for the rest of his life. That very similar gentleman on the right well, he gets a runny nose. Now, why the difference? This is the subject of a lot of medical research right now, but nothing's been definitive. Number four, we have treatment options available for influenza, but less so for COVID-19. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you that treatment options for the flu aren't great. We're familiar with things like Tamiflu and the newer one called Zofluza, and to be honest, they'll reduce symptoms by about 24 hours or so. The most helpful thing though is they tend to reduce viral shedding, which basically means that it makes you less contagious. If you want to get into a controversial topic, let's talk about treatment options for COVID-19. In fact, if you stay tuned to this channel, it might be a fairly good topic for a future post. The fact of the matter remains that there are some options out there and they're currently being investigated and we're all trying to figure this out. But as it stands right now, I really don't have a validated treatment option, especially to give my outpatients with COVID-19. Number five, we have a vaccine for influenza, but not for COVID-19. I understand that there are some very strong feelings out there about for vaccines or against vaccines. But regardless of all that, if you're interested in a vaccine, we have one for influenza. Now it's not perfect, and here are some numbers with this past flu season, but right now we don't have a vaccine for COVID-19. Now it's coming, and at the time that this video is uploaded, about the end of July, 2020, the vaccine has started to enter phase three human trials. Number six, we have developed or residual immunity to influenza, but not to COVID-19. Throughout our lives, we get exposed to the influenza virus numerous times and typically to different strains of this. 
Every time we get exposed to a different strain, we developed an immunity to that strain. Now that will typically protect us from the same strain, but not necessarily to others. However, and again, you have to remember, this is theoretical. The thought is that even if you have antibodies to a slightly different strain, it will still confer some protection to the strain that you're currently getting exposed to. That's called developed or residual immunity, and we have that to influenza because it's been around so long. Now, because this novel coronavirus is novel, meaning new, we don't have this residual immunity to the coronavirus. Now, there is a valid counter argument here. Coronaviruses themselves are not new. They've been around for a long time. In fact, they're the cause of a common cold. So could it be that some exposure to these other coronaviruses gives us a little bit of immunity to this one? It's possible. Could that explain why some people get very sick and some people don't? That's possible too, we just don't know. Number seven, the difference in mortality rate. And I'm going to emphasize that it says right here, so far. So we're fairly familiar with the mortality rate of influenza, which tends to be around 0.1 to 0.2%. We still really don't know what the mortality rate is going to end up being for this novel coronavirus, and estimates range widely, anywhere from 0.5 all the way up to 4%. Now, as we start to identify asymptomatic and minimally symptomatic cases, that's going to drive the mortality rate down. But still, the most conservative estimates right now have it at around 0.5%, which is about five times that of the flu. So we still have to consider that this is potentially a very serious virus. These are the seven talking points that I discuss with my patients when they ask me what the difference really is between the influenza virus and this novel coronavirus. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Do you have any comments or questions? Please leave them in the comment section below and we'll go over them together. Is there a topic that you'd like to discuss? If so, leave that in the comment section too. And if there's enough interest, I'll post a blog about it on my website and post a YouTube video about it. Thank you again. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and I would really appreciate it if you consider hitting the subscribe button as well. Hit that bell so that you get notified when new videos get uploaded. Thanks again, and remember, kindness, that's always the best medicine. Y'all take care.